Hello guys, this is Clint Locklear from Predator Control Group, uh, Wolfer Nation, you know, the YouTube channel you're on. We also have a wolf, uh, website, Wolfer Nation, and a trapping podcast that comes on every Friday night called Trapping Radio, which you can get at trappingradio2.com. Now, this is gonna not going to be uh, too quick of a video, but I, I'm going to tell you why I'm doing this video. Um, I get this question, which I got again twice this morning, and it's someone that's starting an ADC business or they're starting to do some um, some control work or something. And then they realize once they get past all the excitement of I'm going to be a, a trapper that gets paid, and what do I really charge? And they start looking around and somehow I seem to be the guy that does that. So I get these emails. Guys, that is not something that I can put back in an email and have any hope of it being halfway correct, which you're getting ready to find out. So how do you charge on a ADC business, a predator control business, or if you're just going to kind of start a hybrid something other where you're charging for trapping, how do you do that? Now, before we get started, I don't want you to think I'm being negative. I'm not getting on to people for sending these emails. This is just a way that I can say, hey, go to my YouTube and you can watch the whole video on how to charge for your work. And, uh, excuse my new kitten, Pesto, is... Uh, that that's that's what that'll happen so but i want to start off saying guys there's no silver bullet you know and and, and americans we, we love our silver bullets you know if we're getting some type of uh crazy crohn's disease or something like that we want to go to the doctor we find out that there's some himalayan berry that a monk pees on twice on friday and it's going to cure everything so a company puts these claims out everybody believes it all of a sudden people are buying these peed on berries from himalaya and that's the silver bullet, and they don't want to do anything else. Well, when it comes to business, there are no silver bullets. There, there's really not. I wish there was. It'd make it simple, but it's not. So there's so calling someone up and seeing how they charge, or you, you find out what your competition's charging, or you email somebody that's kind of known for business sense like I am and ask them, they can't give you that answer, not the real answer, not the answer that you want, not the answer that you're going to need to stay in business if you're going to be running a business. So there is no silver bullets or quick answers. This is going to fall directly back on your shoulders, which you're getting ready to find out. Now, part of the reason I get so many of these questions is what led us to our, our business school, which is growingabusiness.com. We normally start that up at, after the beginning of every year, sometime in January, and we go through this stuff in detail, all kind of strategies on marketing and, and why a lot of people end up going out of business and different things. That's the reason we went that route, just because when I get so many of these questions, it's easier for me to do it with a lot to, you know, try to help a lot of people than it is just one person at a time, because I don't have time. I still got to go, uh, you know, set traps, run traps, make my lure, do all that other stuff. So. I'm doing this so I can have a reference point. Anybody that sends me this, I can say, just go check this out on YouTube. Okay. Uh, the reason I can't answer how you and the gentleman, I'm not going to mention his name because it doesn't matter. Um, the reason I can't tell you uh, how to charge in your business is because there's all kind of pieces of data that I don't have. And if I asked you, just human nature is you're probably not going to tell me the truth anyway. But since it's your data, you can be honest with yourself or you better be honest with yourself that uh, you're going to give yourself the correct answer, even if you don't like what it shows you, because you know, you can't make a decision with half information. It doesn't work. It's like a computer program that only has half of the ones and zeros. It's not going to work. Now, the reason I'm saying that everyone is different I'm going to use a couple of, I'm going to use a very extreme example here to show you a picture. Okay, let's say you're going in ADC business and you're looking what to charge and you just look in the phone book and you try to act like a customer, which I know all y'all have done. And then you call and see, you know, what do you charge and this, that, and the other. And then you base your price off that. And I see that's very dangerous to a business and it's, it's kind of moronic in a way because you don't know anything about that business. You may think you do, but you don't. And, and here's why. Let's say you're calling a business and you're going to ask what they do on prices. So you want to catch beaver, they go catch beaver for $50 a piece. Well, whatever the number is, is irrelevant. Don't let that get clogged if you're, you're, you're thinking here, guys. So what happened with that business is different than your business. Let's say 
that five years ago, this person uh, had a, a wealthy parent or grandparent that died and he got a big inheritance and he has his house paid for. He opened a store with cash. He got all his traps and stuff paid off. He bought a new fleet of vehicles, all of it paid off. Uh, he's running all this advertisement because he still has money in the bank and he's betting that he, with this kind of jump start, he can get way ahead of his competition and do very good in business, which he probably can. But if that's not you, see, this is very different from you or me or somebody else. You probably still have a house payment. You probably still have car payments. You probably still have uh, a higher insurance on the, on the house. And you got all these costs that someone else may or may not have that they may or may not put in the price of their particular way they price a job. So by looking at someone else's numbers, you can tell if, if he can make a profit off bringing in say 5,000 a week and make a decent living at 60 grand a year, whatever it is, doesn't make any difference, but you need to make uh, $4,000 just to pay all your bills and you're following his pricing stream. Now you're trying to live off a thousand dollars and it doesn't work. See, all this information is, is very different because the personal and the business both has to be taken in consideration here. You know, what does it cost to run the business? Is it is it one where you're just got a shop out back? You know, are you leasing that shop back to your personal self uh, through the business with a lease? Or, or what is it that you're doing? See, I, I don't know that. Do you have a brick and mortar store because you've just doubled your expenses because you got a house payment, now you got a store payment, you got double the insurance, water, electric, all that type stuff. You know, is, are you still making payments on a car? Are you going out and buying a new one every two or three years? You know, all that has to be played in. So that, that's, that's kind of personal. And then the business, you know, what is the debt in the business? What are the payments in the business? What is the insurance cost of the business? All that has to be taken in, in uh, consideration. The other thing is location, guys. Uh, where I live in rural Tennessee, when I hear what some of the people do in the bigger cities as far as charging, you can copy them if you want to, and their phone is never going to ring but once from a customer because you're not going to get anybody here or in a lot of places that are more rural in the country to be paying three, four, or five hundred dollars a beaver. It's just not going to happen, not unless it's something to do with government or something like that. So what other people tell you, see, the, the location where they're at is very different, and you've got to take all of this in consideration when you're coming with your price. That's why I can't give that to you. So just what do you charge? Now, there's, there's two ways you've got to look at your expenses. And there's really only two things in business that anybody can control that they have true control over. One is the expenses. You can find ways to cut expenses, get rid of stuff to cut expenses, uh, do it uh, without employees, whatever it is, and then what you charge. Now, everything else in business is relying on the market. It is the value, what you want, the same value that they think it is you know, different things like that. So you control your expenses and what you, you charge, which is what your cost is going to be. So you, you have the, the, the actual cost of what does the job or task entail. So let's say you're going to do a beaver job or a coyote job. It's 40 miles away. You get a call. You're going to have a form of uh, however you're going to charge. So to go out and do this job, you know, you're going to have 80 miles round trip, uh, it's say it's not that big of a place. Uh, he's got a lot of fences. He can kind of make this easy to make this example smaller. So you're going to know that you'll probably spend a couple hours a day on, on the job till it's done. You're figuring it's going to take you a week. So you got to, you can figure out what your gas is going to be, what your time's going to be, kind of what the lure and cost is going to be, what snares you're going to have to replace, different things like that. That is what the, the actual cost of the job is. But that's not really true cost because uh, there's all kind of terms from getting her to tell you, but the one I use is burn rate. So if you're doing this out of your house and uh, you're, you're doing this full time or you're doing this out of a brick and mortar store, all this is going to change your burn rate because your burn rate is what does it cost you that you're going to have to spend month after month just to keep in business no matter if you get one call or not. Uh, your building payments, your insurance, your phone, your cell phone, your, your water, uh, gas, whatever it is you're doing. Let me get this away from him. Th those are things like burn rates. You know, you're going to have replacement car uh, costs, car payments, car insurance, 
uh, business insurance, liability insurance, uh, CPA. I hope you're smart enough for that insurance, different things like that. So all that's burn rate. So if you don't have one job, what is your burn rate per the month? And you've got to figure this out. If, you, if you're not going to be honest with yourself on this, you probably just need to go get a job somewhere else because you're going to have a very hard time understanding if your business is making it or losing it. So let's say that you have, uh, you're doing this out of your home and you've got a uh, $1,000 house payment and a $1,000 building payment and then counting the insurances, it's another $300 a month. So you're up to $2,300 and you got a $200 cell phone. So you're up to $2,500 and, you, and the car payment, now you're up to three grand all this. See, that's your burn rate. Regardless of what the job is, that is what it is. Now, see, this is another point why I can't give you the absolute correct answer. Everybody's burn rate is going to be different. And the scale that the burn rate is used against is also going to have a big variance on what that is. And, and what I mean by that, let's say that you're starting up your ADC business and you're going to have to get uh, a decent looking vehicle because you've been driving around granddad's old truck. So you're going to have to go, which I don't rec re never recommend a new one, but you know, get one that just looks like that, you know, you're not living under a bridge or something may, or may not put signs on it, whatever. Um, so that, that's going to be that cost, but see, that's a bigger cost to you on your burn rate than say another ADC brand X company that's got a fleet of 20 trucks and they got a special deal with say Ford uh, distributor down here and their volume is so much bigger that the cost of those vehicles is much smaller to the income because they have scale of business. So like Orkin, when they buy stuff, that's a lot smaller percentage that has to be taken account for with the individual uh, person doing the work because it's spread out over a massive company and this scale will change from just doing it yourself to doing it part time to having three employees to having a hundred or a thousand, whatever it is that you're going to be doing, all that is going to change how that affects it. So if you're running 20 people out of a building and it's costing you a thousand dollars a month rent on that building or payment on that building, whatever it is, see so you can you can divide that 20 into that hundred and you'll know that that burn rate on those jobs is going to be different. So your what what you need to figure out is what is your burn rate for most of all of that. That's one of the most in thing. Cause see here, here's the reason most businesses go out of business guys. It's the reason governments stay in trouble so much. You know, when, when I grew up in the eighties and money was just flying around everywhere, anybody could start a business and make money. Now, when the, the SNL collapse happened, all that easy money went away. And so did probably about a third of the businesses in the country. Because a turkey can fly in a hurricane, but you take the wind away and he struggles. And so that's what you're, you've got to keep that burn rate down. It's very important. Now, you know, back uh, before the 2008 crash, money was just being given out. Everybody's getting second, third, 15th mortgages and people giving away money for nothing. And all that businesses could run very well. Now, all of a sudden their burn rates at a certain level because the money was easy to get. And then the the economy screwed up and it collapsed and then now all these businesses are gone why not because their product or service or they weren't dedicated to what they were doing they didn't take into account their burn rate on their pricing so they were they were just out of whack that's why when government gets money and they come up with these new projects and then the economy goes down they got to start borrowing money and printing money is because they didn't take their burn rate into principle so that's one of the most important things you got to figure out to know what you charge so all that has to be taken into account. Now, again, your local market is going to have a lot to do with it. If you're trying to, to emulate somebody in New York City or Washington, D.C. or downtown um, Seattle, Washington, what they're doing, and you're in rural Oklahoma, a farmer is going to look at you like you got four heads and probably kick you in the butt on the way out the gate if you tell him you want to, you know, five, six hundred dollars a cow, like people here online. You know, and I'll be honest with you guys, a lot of the crap that you hear online is exactly that. It's crap. It's deep. It stinks. And it's it's not going to hang around very well. Uh, for some reason in the ADC business, people make claims that are just astronomical. And if you use a calculator in three minutes, you figure it out. Either they can run from trap to trap every 3.2 seconds of a day to do what they're doing, or they're over-exaggerating what they're actually doing. So you have to keep that in mind too. Just because other people say they're doing something that doesn't necessarily mean it's true, guys. I mean, it really doesn't. 
So in your local area, what is the local person you're going to be dealing with, whatever that client of yours is, that he feels comfortable of the value that you're going to give him? So like around here, you know, $50, $60 a beaver, it's not that, that hard of a sale. $100 a beaver gets really hard. $200 a beaver, you don't get any work. Now, you go somewhere up around the rural part of, say, Pittsburgh or something like that, and they got beaver coming up and eating the trees, you know, on the outskirts of one of the little parks, three, five hundred, maybe a thousand dollars a beaver, it would be at a snap of a finger. It's where you're at that makes that big difference. And that's another thing I do not know from someone asking me a question like this that you're going to have to kind of figure that out. Be honest with yourself. Just because you want to make so, a certain amount of money doesn't mean the market is going to allow you because that's not something that you can control is the value that's perceived. You know, like um, what I do with Predator Control Group, when we go to our very specific clients and I want to try to do that with a cattle rancher, it's not going to work. The value from what I do it is even though on paper it should be, it's just not. So what I get paid from my clients is not going to happen from a sheep or a cattle farmer unless they just got more money in God and it's like a hobby to them. But if it's a real honest to good and farmer, he ain't going to pay that. So, I mean, you, you've got to take all this in consideration. So, uh, and you have to know, and this is another reason why I can't give a silver bullet answer, is you've got to know what you're doing this for because it makes a big difference. Is this full-time or is this part-time? Is this uh, something you're relying on totally for income and you don't have any money in the bank for a cushion, which is pretty stupid, but if you do, you know, is that the way, you, did you just lose your job and now you're scrambling to do something? So whatever money comes in, whatever expenses go out, whatever's left over is your net profit. That's what's the, the only thing that matters to you. See, that's very different in that situation. Now, if, you're, if you've got a really good part-time job and you like trapping and you just want to do it on the weekends or the evenings, you don't have to charge as much because, you know, you keeping your house or feeding your kids is not really reliant on that so much. Or you could look at that a different way and go, I'm only going to do it if it's going to be crazy, super profitable because I really don't need the work anyway. See, see how this makes a difference? Uh, now, there's other things that you can think about when you're doing this. Like, see, for me, I've got, I've got a client that's a state away from me that we became good friends and I go down and I do work on his place uh, one or two times a year for about a week at a time. He feeds me very well and when I come home, my payment is dear. That's right, dear. So we negotiate ahead of time. Well, you want me to do this, this, and this. I'll do it for uh, four does that are processed and ready to go when I get there. That's my payment for him. So on that particular job, my goal is to get really good deer meat that I don't have to waste my time to go get. You know, another thing is, are you looking at this kind of a combo with fur? Is it uh, you want to be a, a really big otter trapper, so you need places and have land and water, so you're doing beaver work to get the ground to catch the otter, so when they're $100 a piece, you can really put some money in the bank. You know, how you price that to be very uh, attractive to that customer could be very different than the person that needs every penny just to make his house payments. So that's all this has to be taken in consideration. It really does. Okay, how do you, how do you price for a job? Step one, you got to know your expenses. That's, that's the burn rate and that's what it costs you to do a job. And you're not going to be down to the penny on every single job. Don't get me, don't get me wrong on that. Um. But I mean, you can kind of tell if I'm going to be uh, going to, you know, 40 miles away, this is about what it costs me, um, you know, knowing it's going to, I'll be there maybe say three hours. So we'll go ahead and mark it up to four in, in case the guy wants to talk or it's harder than I think. So then that, that's kind of the expenses, you know, a, a simple way of doing it. You know, you can get crazy with this and you can look at the, you know, the, maintenance on your vehicle and how much you're going to lose one sixteenth and one sixteenth of an inch of rubber on your tires and you know count your oil change into the, the every mile you, you can get really down to dirty with this if you want to but just a basic knowing what it costs the other one is your burn rate and then what what is that going to be added this is where the scale comes into into play if you don't have a bigger scale each type of investments you make you got payments on is going to mean more to that particular job 
and then you'll kind of find a formula to add those up. So if it's going to take me two hours a day or three hours a day, it's probably going to cost me about X amount of money, you know, for the expense for me to go do that. And then the second step, which is one that's the hardest, is what do I need or want to make? You know, and I say need first because what we want to make, we all want to make 20 grand a beaver, but we're not going to make 20 grand a beaver. So what is it you need to make? So do you, do you need to make $1,000 a week, $2,000 a week, $5,000, $10,000, whatever that number is, and then you're going to have to figure out about how many jobs you think you're going to be having, which you're not going to know for sure. And then you're going to have to add whatever that number is, divide it up over that many jobs to your expenses. And that's how you get the price. So if you need to make, if you're doing one job a week, just for, for a simple example, and you got $500 in expenses that week, you need to make a thousand and you only have one job, you need to charge $500 to do whatever that is. You know, two jobs, you charge 250. You can take that on down the range as you want. And that can that thousand can change from whatever number it needs to be in, in your world. You know, because where you live has a lot to do with it. Um, I, I'm sitting in an 1,800 square foot brick home. We got an uh, acre of ground, uh, paid 67,000 dollars for this. Now, somebody else listen to that that lives in San Diego or New York or Pennsylvania or Massachusetts, they're going to be in shock that a house as nice as this is 67. That's not that way anymore. That's what I paid. See, that's my individual numbers. So, uh, you know, you got to keep all that in mind. So you take your expenses and what you need to make, and then you come up with a price. And th that's how it turns into your price. Because if you go less than that, you're not going to have the money you need to make all the other expense money and you're going to be out of business. So if you do it for cheap or you get in a price war with somebody and you get below that number, not only are you working for free, you're working to put yourself out in the street. So you can't do that. And you might find that it's better off when you're starting, which I highly recommend, is to have a part-time job as you build up your, your trapping job and then you can, can transition out of that. And when you transition out of that, you need to be making at least twice as much as you need to make for a living because once you go full-time you have more expenses because of taxes and all other kind of crazy stuff that happens but when you but it, giving yourself a cushion with a part-time job then you're not you don't maybe don't have to charge as much you can build your reputation your social capital and stuff like that and it's tricky i mean it really is it's that's the reason i i mean when i get these emails how do i charge for this i mean it's just like ooh. I mean, because if I give the wrong answer, you know, I could lead someone down a path of their personal destruction and I'm not knowing it. And, and that's the reason I get really nervous with these type questions. Now there's um, different ways that people do charge that you may find works better in your area than others or may be more comfortable for you than others. Now, a lot of people um, will charge don't think about the price now. Think about the structure. They will price by the animal, almost like a bounty system. You get a call, you know, I've got cows killing my, my cattle. Well, I can come out there because you already have this other stuff in your mind. You know about where your business is. I can I can come out and catch those cows for 50 or or $100 a piece, whatever your price is. And that's by the animal, kind of like bounty. Oh, I can tell you, a lot of people are more comfortable with that than paying someone a big price, whether they do or do not catch something. And when you're first starting out, you don't have a reputation. You don't have any social capital with these people, and they're going to be a little leery of you. So that may be something to look at to start off with. Um, you can look into what other people charge, but like I said, don't follow that unless you know what your numbers are. And, and, and I know a lot of ADC guys, younger guys are getting into this. That's exactly what they do. Well, everybody charges $50 for a skunk, so I'm going to charge $48.95. Well, what if it really costs you $52 to go out and catch that skunk? You're screwed. Because not only are you working, you're, you're paying somebody to work now. And that's, that goes against the obvious profit and loss part of a business that you want to be on top of. So you can, you can charge by the animal like a bounty. You can charge by the animal and with a setup fee, I notice a lot of ADC guys do it this way. So if I get a call for the proverbial coyote thing, 
and you tell him, well, I charge uh, $75 for a coyote and I have a $250 setup fee. Uh, so it'll be $250 when I show up because I'm going to be spending a couple of days there or all day there setting all this expensive stuff in there. And you have this little spill you're going to give. And then every, every cow that I catch, you know, it's $50 on top of that. And then you need to structure that where at the end of every week you get paid so you don't get strung out. Just a little bit of advice there. So that's one way. Uh, you can do hourly. I know several good friends of mine that charge uh, by the hour. And I mean, just like a union shop, it's $40 an hour. That, that's the number that seems to be when they run their numbers. That's what it has to be. They got tremendous social capital in their area and a reputation. So when they leave the door, they start that 40 hours when they go to a job. And then when they're working on the job, they're, they're not worried about uh, having to do something maybe not at the best quality because they're going to lose money and they got to get on to the next job. They figured that out. And most of them have told me they're making somewhere around 20 to $25 an hour true profit when they do this spread out over the year. $25 an hour for me is really good. For some of you, you, you know, live in New York City, that's probably not very much. So, I mean, you got to figure that out. But the hourly thing works very well. It takes a lot of pressure off of you to try to uh, be like a doctor today that just kind of runs you through, uh, you know, an office. If you start doing that with your business, your quality is going to go down, your reputation is going to go down, and there again, your income is going to go down. So, you know, hourly is one way to do it. Uh, you can price each job kind of like a, a, a home decorator or a home uh, renovator would do. So you go out and look at the cow job. Do I think I can take care of business for $425? You know what your cost is. You know what you need to make. That's where this comes from for the time. And he either agrees or disagrees or starts to negotiate. Now, that is uh, what I've done more than the, the hourly or anything before I'm doing what I'm doing now. Now, now what we do in Predator Control Group is we charge by time, not hourly, because we're normally going somewhere and we're there for an extended amount of time. I charge per week a price. Now, I know what the costs are doing that week. I know what all of the, what we should be catching and the price of the fur, all that comes into play. So when someone calls me, I give them a price per week and that's take it or leave it. You know, because if I, if they jew me down too much, I'm not going to be making any money. So I'd rather sit here at the house and, uh, you know, drink coffee and not lose money than I would go lose money. So that's the way that I personally do it. But my business is set up very different than a lot of other businesses because of the extended time and being away from home. Um, you can, another way that you can look at this is you can do it through contracts. Say you've got a, you're doing beaver and there's a timber company that that's uh, getting flooded out. You can go in and do a, a, okay, I can come in and trap for so many hours a month uh, to keep this under control for a certain amount of money. And then y'all can negotiate that. But there again, you got to know what your expenses are to do that and what you need to make. And you can't go below that number. Uh, you can, you can do that on smaller scale. Like uh, if you're doing more ADC, like, you know, housing stuff, you, you've got, you've got housing uh, uh, HOAs and, and different things like that, that they can, they can pay you with. So like if you had a great big neighborhood and they're having raccoons come in and destroy the garbage, garbage are getting in the roof and they got two cows that's been spotted and all the moms are scared to death, their kids are going to get eight. A couple of house cats come up missing and, you know, a little chihuahua got his back ripped on by a cow. You could say, okay, I can come in as needed. I will take care of all this problem now. And then as needed, you call me, but the fee for me to be on call for you is this. So that, that could be a contract with a maintenance or it could just be a contract to go in and do the job at one time. But the maintenance is a smart thing to look at because recurring income is pretty valuable to any business and you need to figure out ways to do that. So the maintenance part of that is. Now that's different than doing exclusion because a lot of ADC guys do exclusion. And if you, they're going to be honest with you, probably more of their money comes from exclusion than actual trapping. So you need to have a price for what it is to go fix a chimney, uh, you know, soften on a house, get the bats out of there, you know, put screens so the, the snake can't get back in the bathroom and scare, and scare mama half to death when she's, you know, doing her hair or something, you know, so you can have the, the work and then exclusion and don't just get caught up on the exclusion. 
you could, you know, are you going to tear out the beaver dams on a job? Are you going to charge for that? Are you going to do it for free? Are they going to take care of it? If you're going to do it, if I'm going to do it, it's going to cost this much, you know, and I can go, well, that dam over there, I can't do by hand. So I'm going to have to bring in a machine. It's going to cost X. Do you want to handle that? Or do you want me to handle that? Have that in writing. So there's no confusion later. It could be, uh, you know, we're going to be trapping these beaver on these uh, real expensive, say, fruit trees that you've got out in that field. I can, I can beaver proof those for you before we get started for X amount of numbers. Uh, you know, I can replant the trees uh, using techniques uh, like willow and things that are real simple to get to the roots so you don't lose so much of your, your bank. All those things can be added up to what you can be charging and what your business is. And, and, and that's kind of the more, more common ways that the guys do this. Now, don't be afraid to be creative because you may find yourself in a weird uh, situation. And don't be afraid to negotiate with that person either because that's part of being in business. And guys, listen to me on one thing real hard here. To make it in trapping, trapping is only about 30% of what you do. That's 30% of the importance of what you do. And guys that, that are trappers that get into business, they're technicians, they're a technical trapper that think because they're good at trapping, they're gonna make money in business. And that's not the way that it works. All of the decisions and everything that you do inside that business is if you're gonna make money or not, because trapping is irrelevant. It's all money and sense at the end of the day. So just because you're good at trapping doesn't mean you're good at business. Just because Uncle Billy Bob that's never owned a business tells you what you should be doing doesn't mean you listen to him either. Because 70% of a business, no matter what the technical part of it is, is about the business, not the physical trapping. So just keep that in mind. Now, I hope this helps. I really do. It's it's the I actually took notes so I could have everything that I could to try, to try to do this in a quick manner. If you want to really get serious about this, I suggest you join our business course. Uh, we talk about it on Trapping Radio. You can find out about it on growingabusiness.com, growinganewbusiness.com, because uh, we get in really, really deep. But as, as far as I feel comfortable on YouTube without having information and know what I'm going to be doing with this, that's about as far as I'm willing to go on a question like this because I don't want to mislead people because I don't have all the information. That to me, that's one of the worst things that can happen when someone asks someone else a question is they kind of think they know, but they really don't. And I'm admitting I don't have all your information, so I can't tell you. So I hope this helps. I hope it at least gives you a way to get started. Um, really know your expenses, guys, because that's what's going to kill you. And if your expenses are really high, and the economy's really good, can you survive if the economy slips? And most businesses do not. So the big lesson from all of this is you don't, you, you limit your risk of debt to the eighth degree when you're especially starting a small business. Because if you don't have a couple of months because of whatever happens, and you don't get a lot of work, but your burn rate is taking all your money away, you're gonna be out of business. The lower you keep that burn rate, the lower it's gonna be. Now, it's not as sexy. You won't have the new $60,000 truck and people won't be Googling at you, you know, at all your nice stuff and your little shirts with your logos on them and stuff when you're at a trapping convention or something. But I would much rather be, if you've never read the book I suggested at the millionaire next door, be like one of those guys. Have the 10-year-old truck, just have a decent looking uh, truck with maybe a sign or something on it, have all your equipment paid for, and then at the end, the bank account will overplay the pats on the backs and the guys thinking you're doing really good. That's the important thing with all this. It's not what people think you're doing, it's what you're really doing that matters. So I hope this helps and um, just really think about it because, and it, and and please don't take anybody's advice that can tell you what you need to charge because unless they have all the information that you're being honest with them about, they can't tell you that because they don't know. They have no idea what your business structure is. So keep all this in mind. Uh, really think about it. Um, there's going to be a learning curve. That's fine. You'll find out you're going to lose money on some jobs. You're going to make money on some jobs. That's just the way it is. So I hope this helps and I hope to see every one of y'all on Trapping Radio every Friday night.